Hey, Hardies, I'm Casey. And I'm Cammie. Welcome to the Hardies Hotline, your connection to Hope Valley. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Edify Films, where you can get fabulous When Calls the Heart merchandise, like my hat. And you can also get a fun Win Calls the Heart game from our friends at the Bundle Game. Be sure to use discount code Hardy's Hotline for 10% off. We've got a fabulous episode for you today full of laughter, tears, and heart. So take a walk with us to Hope Valley and let's dive in. Welcome back, Hardies. We are so excited to have you here. I am Cammie, the Hooked Hardy, and you all know my wonderful co-host Casey. Hello friends. You also know our very special guest for today. Now everybody turn in your best manuscripts and be on your best behavior because we have Mrs. Helen Bouchard herself, Miss Terrell Rothery. Hi Terrell. Hi. I know I should be speaking like this, shouldn't I? (laughs) <laughs> hey, hi how are you guys <laughs> we're great good we are so excited to have you on the show not only are we when calls the heart fans but we're huge hallmark fans mm-hmm. so naturally we've seen you in all of your projects and we just think you're wonderful so thank you so much for coming on oh thank you thank you so much <clears throat> so to start off with How have you been? This has been a weird time. I know it's been a weird time personally, as well as the film industry with COVID and everything. So how have you been coping with it? Have you picked up any favorite hobbies or pastimes? Tell us about how you've been doing. Well, it has, like you say, it's been a crazy time for sure. Um, At the very beginning, when everything shut down, it was... um, my favorite hobby, I think, at that point was going through every flavor of Miss Vicky's chips, potato chips. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. I mean, it just was ridiculous. It was like a little taste t- testing buffet for <laughs> Helen. And um, yeah, so I did a lot of that. And then I decided to move over to the kettle variety. I like to say it was Miss mm-hmm. Vicky's cousin, Kettle. So then I moved into those and went, okay, that's it. This has got to stop. Between that and Netflix, it was like, that's it. I, I have to stop. So I decided to pick up some knitting needles because I'm not the most domestic person. Um, and, you know, God bless my grandmother. She kept trying and trying, trying to teach me how to knit, but I had zero patience. So I thought, well, I'm going to give it a try. And uh, yeah, I started knitting. And made my dog a little coat, oh. which is quite sweet. Yes, it's Good. it's a bit of a mess. I did a lot of purling when I was supposed to knit, and <laughs> and you know the armholes are a little uh, lopsided. But for my first attempt, I was very proud. Thank you, girls. Thank you. I can hear the applause yes. now. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> wonderful job yeah. and to take on a, a, a sweater that's that sounds hard I mean I know that for me I would hard. start off with a, a blanket like a, a a tiny blanket you know well that's what it was it was a little doggy doggy thing it was so tiny it was so well I was gonna say easy it was I mean it was easy in the sense that anybody who knows what they're doing it would be like that but of mm-hmm. course it took me forever and I oh yeah I had a heck of a time with it but I did it. And then I moved on to dishcloths and then I moved on to tea towels. Oh, Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. Thanks. Thank you. That, that's really good. Yeah, (laughs) no kidding. (laughs) Thanks for humoring me, girls. Thank you so much. Hey, it's better than either of us can do. I'm my, (laughs) my left hand can, I tried knitting once my grandmother tried to teach me and my left hand was constantly getting in the way. So it was like, yeah. So, okay. So you're all seeing this. So it's like, you go like this and then I have to sort of take the needle and then I wrap it around like this and then slide it off. Whereas my grandmother would just sit and chat. She could chat to you and her, her hands would just keep going like this. And then she'd yell over here. And it's like, if anybody would, London would talk to me and she'd say, mom, can you get me some milk? I'd say not now, just a minute. I'm just, okay. Hang on a sec. Like literally mm-hmm. it took forever. Oh, so that's, that's my little knitting demonstration, but yes, it's, it's quite, it's, it works. 
And if I have time, I'll run and see if I can grab it for you guys later. Oh, fun. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tried crocheting in college because my roommate knew how to do it. And I, I can't say I remember how to, but okay. I did come up with a little, uh, I started a scarf and I told my mom, you know, that Christmas, I'm not done with it yet, but I'll have it for you. And I never completed it. So it's now my daughter's because it's like. <laughs> because you did. all oh, tiny. I love that you did it though. You finished uh, it. Yeah. Well, it finished for a five-year-old, not yeah. necessarily a grown woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what were some of your most valuable lessons that you've learned during the time of quarantine and pandemic? Ah, patience. Yeah. Yeah, which has never been a, a strong suit of mine. Um, but yeah, patience and just uh, what I would say to London, she'd be like, Mom, can I go and do this and can I do that? What was nice, though, in a way, is that for me, my daughter's 12, for those who don't know, is that she put this thing down for a while. Mm. And once they were allowed to sort of, I mean, we were told that we could go outside. So then she had her little buddies in the neighborhood and it was, it reminded me of the, you know, the movie Stand By Me, the kids movie. Did you guys ever see Never that? saw it, but, but I've, I've heard of it. I've well, seen like, bits and pieces. But. Yeah. So just think back to that sort of time where mm-hmm. that's what kids did. They went out and they were on their bikes and then mm-hmm. they'd have a little Ford house or whatever. Well, she'd go with her, her friends and they would all, you know, they knew they had to be distant, but they'd be on their bikes outdoors nonstop. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that was a blessing um, with that. And then, of course, when things got a little, you know, cooler and they had to come back in, I didn't put her into school right away. Uh, it was a gradual return. So that was when it got to be really hard because that now she was, well, why can't I have anybody over? And I said, you can't. We can't do it right now, honey. So mm-hmm. she had one friend, our next door neighbor. They're like best friends. They grew up together. So she, they, they get to see each other, but all her other friends, you know, but she finally, she's back in school. She went back in, I guess, in the fall, mm-hmm. late fall, like November. And um, yeah, she's doing really well. And she's okay. into hockey. So she has her sport and they were allowed to go back on the ice, but they can't, um, they can't play games or do scrimmages because they have to maintain a distance. Yeah. So it's a lot of drills right now. So she's getting a little antsy. She's like, geez, it would be nice to, you know, put those skills to use and practice, mm-hmm. but that's not happening yet, but it will eventually. Yeah. yeah. But I think mostly it was just teaching her to be grateful. I mean, here we are. As so many of us are, where we go, oh my gosh, we have to stay in house. Oh my gosh, we have to do this. And yet, you know, I would say to her, open the fridge, see what's in the fridge, turn Mm -hmm. on the tap. Do you have running water? Aren't you lucky? Look up. Do you see a roof? Mm -hmm. Are you warm? You know, so it was, that was the big lesson that I tried to um, make her realize, right? So patience and gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I can say that gratitude was a big thing. I mean, it was a very, it's been a crazy roller coaster year, but looking back, there's so many little things where I'm like, you know, it was a beautiful springtime here. It wasn't ridiculously hot. We could enjoy our backyard. You know, my girls were carefree and happy. They just, they, they don't know what's going on in the world. They were, you know, they're three and five. So they're very ignorant of different things. I mean, their biggest complaint was the fact that we couldn't go to Target. (laughs) (laughs) Why, mom? Yeah. Yeah. But but why can't we go inside? I'm like, well, you know, not right now. But yeah, yeah, gratitude is so important. Absolutely. If, uh, If it hadn't been for COVID and my husband moving to working at home, we never would have been able to afford our first home. So... So that was a huge blessing. That, That's fabulous. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It, it taught me to look for blessings amongst trials. Mm-hmm. So Because he saved so much gas money and we saved money by just staying home. I didn't have to buy food to pack lunches. I didn't, you know, I could just fix him a sandwich and mm-hmm. have it be that. And yeah. so it was. And the fact so that he was able to work. And you know, he like still that. kept his job, which was amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. 
All right. So let's talk about this incredible career of yours. Okay. <laughs> we both went, <laughs> we both went on IMDB and we said, it keeps going and going and going. <laughs> it's the Energizer Bunny of IMDb. <laughs> yes, and there were some projects that I was like, I did not know she was in this. Isn't that funny? So, yeah. yes. If my, if my daughters knew that I was talking to somebody who had a voice part in Barbie and her pink shoes, oh, they, they would die. You know? <laughs> yes. I love that. That was the big thing. London, my daughter didn't understand a lot of the whole like on-camera stuff when she was younger, uh -huh. but she was like the hit of elementary school because my mom did voices in Barbie. She was in Barbie. <gasps> oh, she did some voices in Barbie. Like that was the thing. Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my girls, if they would, if they could understand it, they would flip about the Barbie thing because they love the Barbie movies. Yeah. And during pandemic, they discovered Chip and Potato. Oh. And they were literally obsessed. Which did I was they like of, Amanda Panda though? Did they like Amanda Panda? They, oh, they loved her. They oh, loved her. You. Yes. Her and, of course, Chip and Potato. <laughs> oh, aren't they, isn't it the sweetest? So it's, it's just it's so very cute. huge. Very yeah, it's cute. a cute one. Yes. And I was very grateful that we'd moved on from Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or did you do you did you have uh Caillou down there? We do have Ca we, yes, we have Caillou. It's on I, PBS. I've never heard of it. He's oh it yeah. drove me crazy. Oh. And then she started to whine like him. Mm. Oh. And I, I was like, okay, that's enough of Caillou. Let's move on to a different <laughs> cartoon. Yeah. yeah. My kids started speaking British. Like, hello, mommy. Oh, <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> all right, we need to find a new show. So Chip and Potato and Bluey are their big ones. That oh. Bluey was my kids, and I'm surprised mm -hmm. that they never took up the Australian accent. <laughs> I don't think we watched Bluey. I don't know if we had that. I think it's fairly newer. It's fairly uh, new. Newer, okay, yeah. She's, she's, she's so past that now. Yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> past that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we understand from Bubbly Sesh that you have wanted to be a movie star since you were four. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. That's uh, it's funny because that's when I did my first commercial spot. So I was like, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> <Kindred spirit. laughs> I love it. And you got what? your you got your performance start in dance, correct? I started out in dance because I was, I know it's so hard to believe, but I was incredibly shy. Right. It was, yeah, I'm sure you guys have heard that. It, it, like really, really shy. So uh, my grandmother, she, she was, how am I going to get her out of this, this shyness type of thing? So it was my cousin who was going to go to a dance class. My aunt took her. And my grandmother said, do you want to go? You'll come. And do you want to maybe go into dance class? And I wasn't sure, but I said, okay. And that was it. Mm. And what kind of dance was it? When I first started, I did jazz, like, okay. modern, like a modern jazz. That's what they called it then. And then from there, I went into tap and I went into ballet and ballroom. And, you know, you know how you just, your kids go into all sorts Snowball. of. Snowball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. And I would hit the stage and it was, I was this different person. Mm -hmm. I would perform and I loved it. And I loved the immediacy of, you know, being on the stage and having people there. And then I'd go off stage and go, I was still, you know, I still had that shyness, but it didn't last long. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh gosh. No, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what was your introduction into acting specifically? So how did you transition from oh, dance uh, to acting? I think for, for me, it just made sense being mm -hmm. in, as a dancer. Then I moved and I, as you know, I always wanted to, like, I like to perform. So then I moved into musical theater mm -hmm. and I loved, loved my musical theater and then that mixed in with theater, you know, live theater. And then I was in my teens and I was one of the dancers on, on a Halloween special. I'll never forget. It was a Halloween variety special um, in one of the local networks. 
well, it was nationwide. It was the, what is called the CBC. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember being there and the camera and I remember going, wow, it was just so different because I felt like it was drawing me in. Mm -hmm. So in theater, I always felt you, you came and you get put out where I just loved the intimacy of that camera. And it was, I was drawn in as opposed to you and Cammy, you know, with theater, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> then I fell in, fell in love with that. Um, and then how did that go? I just, I guess just getting any, I had a, somebody see me on stage and asked to represent me, uh, you know, an agent, theatrical agent. And, and it just went from there. I, um, mm -hmm. that's all I, I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. And lots I, of classes, you know, going to school and training, sure. training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fun um, because Loretta Walsh and Johanna Newmarch have the same similar backgrounds. They started off in dance and then they moved on to acting and stuff. So yeah. well, Johanna and I were in an acting class together. Oh my. Oh wait. Oh, no, that's right. That. Did she tell you? She did. She did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was, uh, first of all, an amazing human being and such a beautiful actress. Oh Can my gosh. Agree? I love her yes. work. I love her work so much. So yeah, it was, you know, it was, and we would see each other in the rooms auditioning mm -hmm. or whatever. And anyway, she's a love. So it's fun that I, I got to be on her show. Yeah. So, uh, heart. so it was a treat. Yes. Yeah. She gushed about you. She said that you were yes. basically goals. <laughs> oh, she, I gush about her. It's, it's mutual. Trust yeah. me. Just an amazing. Have you guys met her in person? Uh, not, not in, in person. person. Oh, she's just a love. Yeah. Yeah. But we we interviewed her, mm -hmm. and so she, you know how amazing she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember. I remember one point she bent down to she bent down to do something, so she was off camera, and I said to Casey, <laughs> <laughs> she stood back up and went, "I heard that." <laughs> I was very quiet. <laughs> okay, I'm dying to know because musical theater is my specialty. I love Broadway. So what's your favorite? What's your favorite musical? It's hard. I, I mean, I can't, I can't sort of think. I've been asked that before and I'm always put on the spot, but I love um, Anything Goes. <laughs> As a kid, my thing was, I think I mentioned this maybe to Bubbly Sesh, I can't remember, but Singing in the Rain was mm -hmm. one of my all-time favorites. And I would, oh, I would fall because I'd be in my living room as a little girl. I'd be trying to do different things. And I tried to do, you know, the the, the one where they go on the couch yeah. in mm -hmm. good morning, good. So mm -hmm. I tried to do that and the couch and things <laughs> fell. My grandmother came in running and I'm like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, I'm all right, I'm all right. <laughs> and like a lot of that. So there was that. And then I loved Brigadoon. Mm. And then I loved... Um, Oh gosh, you know what? I'm losing the name, but um, a horse is a horse, of course. You know, uh, guys and dolls, guys and yes. dolls. Hello, guys and dolls. I always wanted to play Adelaide. I never oh, did. Oh, you would have made an amazing Adelaide. I thought so too, but yeah, it didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe if they do a geriatric version, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, too fine. Too fine. Well, you know what? That, I, I feel like because now we know how much talent there is in Hope Valley, we need Helen to come back and maybe surprise us all with the Hope Valley musical that we've I all been pitching. She needs to come! We We're want, adding. I want to come back so badly, and I would love, wouldn't that be fun, When Calls the Heart, the musical? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've talked about right? it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll introduce the Bouchard Bristol. Oh, Ooh. show us! Show us the bru the Bouchard. I don't bristle. have it yet, but it was. I think when we were talking, it was like it was one of those things with like the you know the. I can't remember how we did it, but it was yeah we 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 coined the phrase the Bouchard Bristol. Right. So we we'll have to do some kind of Bouchard Bristol in the When Calls the Heart musical version. Yes. I'm gonna work you know what? Right now. Writing, I, writing it down. I expect you to uh, <laughs> give me a few dance steps, write it down, throw me some ideas here. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Fantastic. We will collaborate. <laughs> Thank you. Let's there do you it. go. <laughs> <laughs> so 
as we were talking earlier a little bit about the Barbie movies and Chip and Potato, um, you've done quite a lot of voice work in your career. So what is your uh, technique for creating your characters with nothing, like with no physicality? And, and I know in oh, Chip and, and Potato... And you, with those characters? Yeah, okay, go on, sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, but I know in Chip and Potato, you voice three characters, correct? Mm. I had Ms. Nash, mm -hmm. who was the school janitor. <clears throat> Excuse me, Amanda Panda, um, Nico's mom, a panda mm -hmm. bear. And then the third one was the, um, was I a giraffe? I think so. Dazzles. I was Mrs. Dazzle. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you're not really going in. Let me see. When you're doing animation, you're not just going in sort of, and I, um, without anything to, to work from, most of the time they'll give you a drawing of what the character is going to be like. You get a synopsis of what the animation show is going to be about, and they'll show you like a little black and white kind of drawing storyboard. And then sometimes you'll get the photos of the character mm -hmm. done in color and tr true to form. So you get an idea, and then you go in and you try different voices where you, where you think that might go. Um, that you least expect are the ones that they'll pick. Like sometimes you think, would that voice work? Because it sort of goes against stereotype mm -hmm. and it works beautifully because that's what makes it so funny. Yeah. Right. Right. And with voice actors, I'm not one of the, um, but the majority of my work is on camera, mm -hmm. but yes, I have been very fortunate to have the voice work, but those who do specifically voice work actors mm -hmm. are so brilliant so talented they'll you know the director will be in the booth and they'll say well why don't we try can you throw this out and they'll do this accent and then they'll do that accent and then they'll they'll bring their pitch way down or you're looking at a woman who's in her 40s and she's playing the voice doing the voice of a young boy mm -hmm. and you never know like if you're not looking you you hear a young boy yeah that to me is magical. And what's even more magical is what people don't see when they watch the animation because it's a bunch of pre, this is pre COVID, a bunch of actors in a circle as if you're doing a radio play kind of thing. You've all got your own microphones and you're reading it. So you kind of read it like a play. So mm -hmm, you, right. you do your parts. But when it's, when there's a downtime or the, you know, the, the sound is shut down, listening to all these voice actors, they like, riff off each other. Like it's, they just go and they go into different accents and then they create. And I would sit there and literally almost pee my pants because <laughs> I would be laughing so hard. And then, of course, it would be my turn to have to get up and I'd have to like I, we'd be sitting down. Then you stand up. They can see in the booth because it's glass. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. And I'd be doubled <laughs> over. I couldn't get anything out. Like it just, I had to like pull it together and then do my part. But they just, that was probably one of my favorite things about mm -hmm. voice acting is the behind, I was going to say behind the camera, but behind the microphone, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it's fun. Do you have, do you have a favorite animation project that you were involved in? Mm -hmm. I can't think of any one in specific, like one specific character I I've you know I love them all they've been so mm. much fun I think yeah I, I can't I can't give you a specific mm -hmm. I I do like playing sort of the nasties I think I did a an evil baroness in um G.I. Joe and I loved oh. playing her oh, oh that's really. fun that that's is fun. So I fun. do I have to admit I love and that's another thing the beauty about animation is that you can go as big as you want because mm. It, there's no holding you back you yeah know? so you could just go and oh my gosh that was fun that was <laughs> it's fun being evil sometimes <laughs> yeah just yeah. a little bit a little just bit, little bit. <laughs> just a little <laughs> so what is your favorite non-hallmark project that's not animation so my favorite Hallmark project? Non-Hallmark. Non -Hallmark. Non -Hallmark. Oh my gosh. That I've done mm -hmm. or that I like to watch? That you've done. That you've done. I would have to say, um, because the character is so dear to my heart and it's it's the gift that I call it, the gift that keeps on giving, would be Janet Frazier when I did Stargate. 
And it was my husband oh. loves Stargate. So when I said, honey, I'm interviewing somebody from Stargate, he went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was um I loved that character. I loved all of the characters. And um I have, yeah, I got a, I have a real warm spot for her. If you are not familiar with the show, Casey, my character uh, was killed in the in the, the line of duty. Oh, but it's uh, it's sci-fi, so I yeah. was um, on a different planet uh, rescuing somebody. I know. Look at Cammy's laughing. She's like, <laughs> on a different planet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was on a different planet. And I was rescuing this person, and he survived, and I didn't. Mm. And I have not seen the episode to this day, and that's well over 20 years ago, um, because the reading the script was so touching and it was just so moving for me because they ended up, he survived and his wife was, um, uh, uh, was pregnant. And so they named the child, little girl, after my character Janet oh. and it was beautiful it was just yeah a really lovely I mean if you have to leave a show that was such a lovely way yeah um, to have it end you know mm-hmm. then again it was sci-fi so I did come back in season nine from an alternate universe oh, oh yeah. yeah that's the beauty of sci-fi right mm-hmm. yeah you, you can, can come back you can come back in very yes. unique and fun ways. Yes. <laughs> unique yes. is definitely the word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We know that you told Jackson Shaw that when it comes to Hallmark, it's not one particular project. It's the overall experience. Yeah. But if you had to choose, oh. what do you think would be your favorite Hallmark project? I can't. I can't <laughs> even. I mean, because I would just list them all all off I honestly I love I love every single character I've played I love every single story Mm -hmm. line that I've been a part of um one that stands out because she was a little bit different was uh there goes my dog um I forget the character's name, but it was the Bramble House. Bramble House Christmas. Oh, yeah. And she was a little bit crotchety, that mm-hmm. character. Oh. And I can't so say, unlike really, I didn't notice that. <laughs> uh, she was. And so that was fun, just to get to play, mm-hmm. you know, something a little bit different. Um, but all of them, oh, my gosh, Cedar Cove, you know, my... I loved my character on that. She was so funny and such a little spitfire. I Mm -hmm. just loved her and she was so funny. Um, And every movie, every movie, I I can't pick. I love them all. That's okay. I'm I'm a a fickle Hallmark girl. What can I say? (laughs) Well, that's a happy ending to be had. I'm so happy. I love romance. (laughs) It's just fitting. Just that kidding. just show, that just shows that Hallmark is such an awesome place to work. So exactly. It really is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's Uh-oh. talk about when calls the heart. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I have to I have to say after watching your arc, I was like we ne- I, I need Helen back. I need her back as a recurring character. I need her back. <laughs> I love Helen. I, I, I don't know. There's just something about her. I think it's because there's such a, tra- there's almost that beginning of a transformation with her that I was mm. just very much drawn to. Cause I love seeing characters that just develop. And I feel like there's so much more we can have from, from Helen and, um, I don't know. There's, it's been a while on when calls the heart where I've had a, I've had that just, I don't know, connection with a, uh, a, a guest star. Yeah. Oh, so, that's so nice. Thanks Casey. Yes. I, that means a lot. I appreciate that. I will, I will pitch it. To pitch our, it. Would you pitch, pitch it? it. <laughs> pitch that and then pitch the musical. Yes. Cammy can choreograph. Oh, um, <laughs> it's uh, you know, she's, I agree. There's still a lot there. And then again, that is kudos to John Tinker, who Mm -hmm. uh, created this character. And I'm just so grateful, so grateful that I got to play her. Um, But yeah, I, I quite, I quite like her. I loved her mystery. I love her walls, man. Mm -hmm. Those are some 
big, strong walls that she has. So, I mean, you, you see a little bit, and I, I do, I have to admit that that snippet of that vulnerability, mm -hmm. you know, is just, it was beautiful to see that come through and that, you know, Elizabeth was the one to be able to pull that out of her. Yeah. You know, so there's that, that dynamic too. It's interesting that she confided that there was this something there, mm -hmm. you know, that she just gravitated to, even though that there was that, I, I think Helen loved the headbutting. There's little moments you would see where she'd give it to her and then uh, Elizabeth would re respond. And then you'd see Helen, it was like, like she, it's almost like a little, yeah, a little yeah. testy kind of thing. So yeah, it was a, a I liked that. I loved where they went with that. Um, and I thought that was a huge reveal that she would feel that comfortable to speak to Helen or mm -hmm. to Elizabeth like that. But yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a lot more there. I'd, I'd love to know more of why she is the way she is. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That she's so protected and yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think, do you think she'll be back? I hope so. I, mm -hmm. I can't, I never speculate. It's one of those things when I uh, was offered the role, for instance, on Stargate, it was a guest star. She might, re she might, re uh, re re what do you call it? She might return. She might mm -hmm. be a recurring here and there. Mm -hmm. And seven years, it was, you know, a series regular. So I was beyond grateful. So you just don't know. Mm -hmm. Would I jump at the opportunity? I would be, yeah, how high? Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it was it was lovely. And it's an amazing um, what an amazing set, you know, and no wonder you're so attached to those characters. Mm -hmm. They're just amazing. Like the actors, the set, the scenery is just it's stunning. Yeah. It was stunning. It's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so what was the process like in you getting that role of Helen? Were you offered the role like did did it get pitched to you or I actually submitted for that I did an audition oh, okay. and I really I I yeah I really loved what I read mm -hmm. so I I was excited to to try something with that character and then I ended up gratefully getting the job and then John called and we had a little conversation about her before we, you know, went into, to, when I went to set and camera and it just, it was also nice because I wasn't walking into a set that I didn't know people. Yeah. I knew, I mean, when I walked in, Peter DeLuise, uh, who directed is a, a friend and we worked together. I first met him as a director on Stargate mm -hmm. and um, had the honor of working with his uh, late great dad, Dom DeLuise. And yeah, so there's that. And and uh, the crew, I know a lot of the crew from, from different shows. So I mm -hmm. felt like I was at home there and Aaron, everybody was just so welcoming. And then meeting Chris, my son, and I'm looking up, looking up <laughs> at my boy <laughs> and thinking, wow, what a beautiful, what a gorgeous man. And he's even more beautiful inside. And mm -hmm. we laughed a lot. I enjoyed every second with him. And also uh, seeing Jack again. Jack Wagner and I had been mm -hmm. together before on a movie. And, and then I, of course, would bump into him at various events uh, for Hallmark. So, yeah, it was it was lovely. And I felt so welcomed. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was it's a really great place to be. So you've told us the fun part about creating Helen. What would you say was the most challenging part about creating her character for you? Uh, not allowing me to come through. Um, oh, because mm -hmm. yeah, you love warm and fuzzy. Obviously, I'm so warm not. and fuzzy. <laughs> I, you know, it was hard to get that bristle thing happening. But um, I just, it was, yeah, it was finding that it was just really nice to sort of. For me, I remember uh, in various acting classes, and Cami, maybe you can agree with me with some of your training as well. Mm -hmm. Is that Nobody can do a role the same way as you can because they are a different person. So oh, there's absolutely. aspects of them, mm -hmm. right, into that character. So I could never achieve what Cammy can achieve because I'm not Cammy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Casey, I'm looking at her right now. Um, and the same goes. It's like, so mm -hmm. I had to 
find a way to make Carol and Helen work together. So little the challenges were not to, to, to maintain that wall and to hold where I would really want to express in a mm-hmm. certain way. I so I had to hold that in. So I just I I I, I loved it. And also what works for me, one of the things that I like to do, doesn't ma- matter even if I'm off camera and I can be wearing Uggs or comfy slippers or something, I always wear the shoes that my character wears because I find working from my feet, working and being in literally in those shoes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I find who I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it gives you a yeah. certain posture mm-hmm. and, right. and you're forced to walk a certain way. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Which is the beauty of, of being in a period piece because the clothing also makes sure that, you know, you're, like, <laughs> you're, you're holding your posture. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that it was great. And also just being on the set. So, you know, the smell, I'm a, as you know, an animal person and I used to ride. So I love the horses and mm-hmm. it just, it just, it's so easy. You just go there. You just go to that place where we are in a different, it's a different time. And we held ourselves as humans in a different way. And Mm. we didn't express ourselves the way we do in today's society, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say was the best part about working with Aaron and Chris? Aside the fact that they're delightful humans. Oh, they're amazing humans. I'm, oh, I can't say enough. Uh, the professionalism. I love how Erin works. She's just on all the time. Like she is there and focused. And both actors are so giving, meaning like you, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Having that reaction, like they're totally there with you in the scene. and They give you something to work off of. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely and and they give you you know it's they're lovely off as well so it all it all works mm-hmm. so I would say you know just that just that they're you know professionals and good at what they do and good good people so mm-hmm. it was yeah it was good yeah so one thing that I was very curious about was Helen's very intimidating manner, yet her insistence on call me Helen. So trying to be familiar and at the same time acting very superior and intimidating. Why the line in in your mind or in in Helen's? Because I think that was a a wonderful reveal on John's part. Yeah. Think about it. It's, is it passive aggressive? What is it? Mm -hmm. You know, because you have this way, does she really mean it? You know, I think it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, you can take it any way. So when I would, when I, what my choice was as an actor, when I said that was, Oh, please call me Helen. There wasn't, I didn't feel a, a genuineness Mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. I chose to keep that there and it was again almost like a little test so when she said at the door Helen it was it was more fun like wasn't she I don't think I chose not to, it wasn't a mean thing mm-hmm. it was let's see where she's gonna go with this and there were, uh-huh. it to me it was an internal kind of and then she says Helen I don't know if they caught it on camera but then when she leaves I, I, I remember turning and clocking that how you know mm-hmm. oh like, they they caught it on camera they catch that oh okay. they saw the little <laughs> smile <laughs> yeah you see it so, yeah so there that's what that's what how I took it you know what I mean and it could have been played like you're saying it could have mm-hmm. been played anyway but I liked I just that was to me a Helen thing to do it that way you know yeah Another character question for you that has kind of, I don't know, there's been a lot of it on the, on the, on the interwebs amongst the Hardys. And um, we've racked our brains. <laughs> yeah, yes, we racked our brains on this one. Um, but why do you think Helen told Lucas about Elizabeth's involvement? So, um, because at first, uh, with the secret of the, the husband having left, hus- uh, having left Helen. Um, 
at least we as- we assume Helen told Lucas. Yes. I assume the same. Okay. Because <laughs> it's never it's never actually said in the mm-hmm. script. So we're like, okay, it was either Helen or Rosemary. And I don't think Rosemary would have said that. So No, I and how I chose it is that I did tell him. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I think, but you're right. I mean, it can be any, it can be left open. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are your thoughts? What do you guys think? Well, we want to know why Helen threw Elizabeth under the bus and got Lucas (laughs) mad at her. (laughs) I I guess from my perspective, I I think, I want to say that Helen maybe panicked a little bit because this was a very vulnerable place for her to be. Um, from my understanding as a viewer, she and Lucas have a very unique relationship where it's not necessarily warm and fuzzies, emotional, um, but she does love her son very dearly. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I, fiercely. Yeah. And I think it was, there was that, that weird conundrum within her to, how do I be, how do I break down and become vulnerable to my son and letting him know that his father has left me and, but still hold up the walls and still hold up the, the, you know, the business, you know, very stringent outside, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of, that's kind of where my brain went. I, I was still trying to massage that conversation into my head to make it justifiable. <laughs> Like, how does that come out when you're having lunch in the saloon with your son? But, um, but going deeper into that converse, going deeper into Helen's, um, Helen's character, that's kind of where I landed as a viewer. Okay. Amy? What I probably, besides the panicking, is maybe she thought that because Elizabeth was involved, the blow would be softened a little bit. And I also think that because she is just starting to show her vulnerability and that scares her that she didn't want to be alone in that. Mm. Oh, that's good. too. So she didn't, she didn't want to be alone in, in the vulnerability. And so maybe if she thought that she told Lucas that she had an ally, maybe it would soften things a little bit, especially if it's a woman in whom Lucas thinks very highly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. So you've heard our thoughts. Give it to us. (laughs) I no. I'm going to, I'm going to sort of let that sort of just trickle out there because I love the fact that everybody has their own perception. So I'm not going to spoil that because I would have my own as well, but Mm. I like that. I love, you know what I love? I love that you guys are thinking that I love that it's going to that place of why did she do that? And something you said, Cammy, is when you said, why would she throw Elizabeth under the bus? I never thought of it as her being thrown under the bus. Oh, oh that's that's probably because you may not have seen the scene um, where Lucas almost yells at Elizabeth. Uh, oh, no, but I read it. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. Today. You did read it. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. he just comes out and says, why didn't you tell me? I'm so yeah, so indirectly, not to. <laughs> he was under the bus, but look at what she did, though. What she did was validate Helen's belief that she could confide in her. And it, yeah. and she then mm. says to her, you know, that was a horrible thing for me to do. She didn't, she didn't mean to put her in that position. I think in a really s- simple way, she just allowed that to come out. And it just came out to Elizabeth that she felt she could. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've done that. I don't know in life. I I can't give you a specific, um, where I've gone, please don't say anything, not thinking about the other person because you're so caught up in your own turmoil that you don't think about what you're doing to that other person, like your best friend or whatever, by Mm -hmm. saying, please don't say anything. And they're left in the middle, like you say, and they are under the bus. But when in that specific moment in time, when you blurt something to somebody and you tell them not to say anything, it's it's innocent. It's done. It, it's not done with um, malice. Does that yeah. make sense? Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. That makes and a lot I, of sense. I believe that's what happened. I don't believe she manipulated. I don't believe there was anything behind it. What she was doing. It just that's a relief. 
that's what I think, you yeah. know, and who knows, who knows what's going to happen. I mean, well, she's, she's gone doing whatever, but if she were to ever come back, <laughs> it would be interesting to see if that's part of the other stuff. Right. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. For, for this moment where she's, you know, she's now gone and trying to make amends or whatever with her husband to see if they can work. Thanks to Elizabeth. Um, I think it really was just that moment of just, it just came out. Yeah. And, and you know it what? It certainly did, you're right, put her in such a horrible position. Yeah. And in talk, in hearing you talk about that, I had another thought about the saloon, com- the, the, the imaginary saloon conversation that we never saw. That we never saw. <laughs> um, but I remember in that episode, Helen was almost like, Uh, with Elizabeth she was like are you does that mean if I don't say anything you will um and so and then the whole trust thing so I can also see Helen saying something along the lines of I'm sure you've already heard or when she's explaining this she might have said well Elizabeth had told me because they had that big heart-to-heart conversation um and so yeah I, I can also see the fact that you know Helen not throwing Elizabeth under the bus but like you said it was kind of a indirect accidental reveal not realizing that she was you know revealing that she had told Elizabeth before Lucas too so that's also very interesting see Helen is just so complex and so many she is complex because then you can even go into how did she handle that with her son what was their conversation did Mm -hmm. he feel betrayed yeah you know so this could open up a whole gamut right because it looks like he did feel betrayed (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've took never, it out on Elizabeth. You we've know, never gonna, seen him so angry. I mean, we. I remember Casey. Father. He gets it. <laughs> Casey and I were talking about it. We're just like, man, Oof. Lucas is mad. <laughs> we've never seen him like this before, especially not with Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So with the conversation that Elizabeth has with Helen inside the row house, there's a very tender and sweet, sweet, sweet moment that both of us, we just fell off of our seats. We were gushing. Um, How did they get one of the Taylor twins to hug you in that moment? He just melted my heart. Just (laughs) melted my heart. Oh, well, you're both parents, so you know exactly it's like even just thinking about it, my heart, I feel the, the strings. Yeah. Being pulled. Oh. Uh, well, there was time, like they, we would warm up. So I had to, I spent time with him, mm-hmm. them. Uh, Which one were you working with in the scene? Do you happen to remember? Forgive me. No, oh, I oh. don't. Yeah. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> yeah, Aaron would know. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember. That's but, okay. So it's spending time with them and, and warming up. So there's little things where I had like a little gummy worm. Ooh. Hey, do you want to have this? You know, and also I think because I'm a parent, mm-hmm. it was easier for me to try and, you know, um, be there for this little guy. And I don't know how. And there was lots of different takes that we had. Right. But when, oh my heart I can just I can still feel his little arms it was just oh it was so easy to fall into that place that Helen fell into because of those little beautiful little arms and his little face yeah it was yeah magical one of my I love that moment absolutely love it there's stuff on the internet where it's like a okay this is where I'm showing my ignorance is it a meme what are they called where it repeats Oh, the oh, little gift. gift. Gift, thank you. Where it's that moment. And it's, and I could, every time I watch, or if I see it, I feel that. I feel that mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Oh, oh so, so cute. Yeah. So there was a lot of time be- without the camera rolling where we would just be doing things and then camera would just keep rolling. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you, you would just see what we were going to get. And it was, oh, it was lovely. Yeah. Oh, I had mentioned, I think to Cammie, said she probably had M&Ms in her pocket. <laughs> That's why they don't melt. Only in your mouth, not in your hands. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was Casey's theory. My theory, because this is what I do with my own children, is oh, she's sad. Can you give her a hug? And like, 
Terrell's a very good actress. She can put on a legitimate sad face and then he would feel feel sad and want to comfort her. So he would come and give her a hug. I can't. Yeah, I know. Listen to me. Oh, I think at one point I was, you know, you're sitting there and camera's rolling. And Mm -hmm. I I think I looked, I went, can I have a hug? Do you think I could have a hug? You know how you talk to Mm -hmm. a a little one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That is know. precious. So cute. Oh, where's oh our friend gosh. Jess when we need her? We we need mops. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Our friend, our friend Jess on another on another uh podcast that we're in the Sign Seal Delivered podcast. She uh we're always the puddles and she's the mop. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a burning question. Do you think, as Helen, do you think Helen approves of the idea of Lucas and Elizabeth together? Or is she not good enough for mommy's boy and she would rather the constable won out? Hmm. Hmm. As Helen? As Helen, <laughs> you can give you can give Terrell's opinion as well, <laughs> but I don't know if well, you have opinion, a certain team. My opinion—I mean, I will whatever the the writers would want for that. But so my <laughs> Terrell's opinion it, with Helen, I'm just thinking, where would I go with this one? I think she would still want him happy. She wants mm-hmm. him to be happy. So mm-hmm. I guess it would depend on. On what happens with the relationship if there was, you know, if it was to continue at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. At the moment that I left, like Helen, I, now I'm thinking with my character. Sure. I don't know if that entered in, but I certainly knew that he was smitten with her. And mm-hmm. I also knew that the Mountie is smitten with her. Mm-hmm. And of course, as a parent, despite the walls that Helen has, she would want her son to be happy, mm-hmm. you know. And she genuinely likes Elizabeth Mm -hmm. and she genuinely respects Elizabeth. So those are, that's huge to respect somebody for Helen or for anybody really, Mm -hmm. for me, especially, you know, you got to respect somebody, but Mm -hmm. she really respects Elizabeth. And I think she would be honored to have her as a Mm daughter-in-law, you know, I do, I do. I really, I believe that. It would be fun to see if we were, you know, if I were, to, to be part of that um, family if it continues or whatever, but it would be fun to see. I don't think it should be all warm and fuzzy. I think there would still have to be little sparks between the two. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's the magic of Elizabeth and Helen is that <laughs> they give as good as they get kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I love, I really like their banter. I like the banter between those two women. Yes. I do too. This is definitely, this is a situation that Helen has never been in before. Editing the manuscript of somebody in whom her son is interested. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, this is a first. (laughs) Yeah. And seeing, uh, for Helen, seeing Elizabeth's characters in her book, like the guys are combined into... One. So then I'm sure for Helen, that's also one very eye opening and also maybe a little confusing. (laughs) Like, hmm, when when she's putting on her mom hat. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The two hats on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. All right. We have what we love to call Rosemary's Rapid Fire. Oh, dear. Okay. uh, To end off with here. So, Take it, Casey. All right. What is your favorite set location on When Calls the Heart? Um, the church. Oh, yes. Like outside. The, the view oh. outside of the church. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely inside, but just looking at that from afar, mm-hmm. I just think it's so pretty. So, mm-hmm. so pretty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Outside of Helen, which character that you know of would you like to play for a day? For a day. Um, oh gosh, I know it's supposed to be rapid fire for a day. Who would I like to play for a day? 
I think I would want to play um, the character who wears, shows her ankles. Oh, Fiona? Fiona. Yes. yes. <laughs> I love that character. She's gutsy. Yes. She's fun. She's fun. And she's brave. And yeah, I would want to play her for a you day. You make a good Fiona. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that girl rolls up her sleeves and she's like, oh, don't you love it? Yeah. She's on fire. <laughs> no, I lo- yeah, I would definitely want to. I'd maybe say, could I play her for two days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What modern convenience would you take back to 1918? An electric heater. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Especially mm-hmm. in Canada. Especially in Canada. Uh, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's plug that in. Propane heater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you, as Terrell, would Terrell rather eat at the saloon or Abigail's Cafe? Abigail's Cafe. Oh. oh. <laughs> we're really going, we're really going aside from Helen, aren't we? <laughs> you said it's Terrell. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so who in Hope Valley would you work for or with? I know there's several different characters, but um, maybe there's there's the lumber mill, there's the telephone at the mercantile. I would want to work. Uh, who has the dress shop? Oh, yes. Dottie's dress shop. Yep. Yeah. Rosemary yeah. is currently the head of the dress yes. shop. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. So do you like yeah. fashion and all that fun stuff? Oh, are you just saying as Terrell or as, as Helen? Oh, sorry. As Terrell. As Terrell. Oh, well then as Terrell, I probably want to be in the barns. Oh. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Right, oh, give me a stall to mock. Let me, you know, pick some hooves and let me ride. That's where I'd be. Yeah, makes total sense. But Helen would be in the dress shop. Okay, yeah, okay. finest fashions from New Orleans or wherever she's been. In the <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So this last part of the rapid fire it regards castmates, and so we know being a guest star, you weren't there for very long and you weren't able to get to know a lot of people before because of COVID restrictions, but Mm -hmm. just whoever pops in your head, who's most likely to play a prank that you did a scene with? I would say um, that I did a scene with. What anybody got to know? Um, I would think it would be Ben. Oh, yes. (laughs) I got to tell you that guy had me in stitches like all the time sometimes I would just look at him and I would start laughing like that scene where his ear gets cut oh yes I, I, every single take I mean that I just I said to to Aaron and then I, of course told Ben as well I was like he's so funny like every single take he had me in stitches Yes. Don't pass out. Don't pass out. Oh my gosh. And, and that the way he was strutting and had his ear his ear covered and I was it was just so, Is it still there? Is it still there? Oh yeah, that was good. Oh, too funny. Yeah. Um, who is most likely to burst out into random song or dance? Uh uh Paul Green's character. Ah, yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who would be most likely to be found at Crafty? Me. <laughs> I heard you say on Bubbly Sesh how you're notorious for, for, for Crafty. So. I'm Crafty and I eat all my props. It's like, I'm so bad. And so I'd always go down there and I'd get my coffee. And I love, they had this great mixture of, of nuts and raisins and M&Ms. And I just like, because everything's, you know, you have to handle things. So, so you had to turn this dial and, right. and they'd go and I'd be like, Oh, 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 trying to okay, okay, and then I'd have to go put that down. I'll just keep eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you say is your favorite snack? The M M&M and M mixture. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I felt I would feel less guilty because it was raisins and it was of nuts. Course. And, you know, you're yeah. getting all the food groups in there. All the food groups. All the food right? groups. Yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who is most likely to laugh or cry at an inappropriate time during filming? Uh, I would think Pascal. 
so far it's been a unanimous. Yep. She, <laughs> she said she said that about herself when oh. we asked her that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pascal, she's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you consider to be the mother or father hen of the group? The mother would be Aaron. Mm. That's a unanimous consensus as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The father, I don't know. I can't answer that one. I don't know. Um, yeah. You, that's okay. You had an yeah. answer for mother. So. Yeah. And then if you and your castmates were stuck on an island, so say you and Chris and Aaron, what would you, what would each person be doing until being, until rescued? Uh, Paul would be on his guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris, what would Chris be doing? Smoking a cigar, maybe. <laughs> um, just chilling, you know, just waiting. Just chilling. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's so I would be drinking coffee because I just miraculously had my Nespresso machine by my side. <laughs> <and> washed up. <laughs> yeah, it's solar, you know, so just, yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah. It, well, it, that's good. That's a good. start. Yeah, right? that's a start. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a very good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Terrell, thank you so, so oh, much. This guys, has been thank such you. a pleasure. It's been great. Thank oh. you so much, both of you. Well, oh. oh, you are as well. You oh, are so such a delightful. You're such a generous person. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Oh, I hope I get to come back. I hope the show comes back. I hope, I hope, I hope, hope. Get it? Hope, hope Valley. Hope. Oh, you're in Hope Valley where dreams come true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Hardies, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this chat that we had with Terrell as much as we did. And we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.